Huh. Yep. I'm gonna build a retort. Hi, welcome back to the forge. Uh, I don't really have a local uh, coal supplier. I'd have to drive a, a good distance to get coal. I uh, end up using charcoal for my forge. Um, I have other plans that need charcoal as well. I'm gonna plan on doing a smelt later on uh, this year. Um, but I. I my source of charcoal is Royal Oak. It's excellent charcoal. Uh, and at Walmart right now, you can buy 30 pound bags of it. It's great stuff. Um, but it gets expensive after a while. And as I've just shown at the beginning of this video, I've got plenty of wood sitting around, both to use for fuel to fire or retort, as well as fuel to turn into, or yeah, wood to turn into charcoal. So I'm gonna start making some charcoal. Let's see how this works out. Uh, follow along with the build. I probably won't give a whole lot of narration, just let the camera run for a while. Um, but we're gonna get started on that today, and please follow along. to using your tools is you got to be 10% smarter than the equipment you're working with. And this Dremel's about to whip me. <laughs> but I got it. No, nowhere near it. At least an inch. No, I don't need a wrench. Put the vice on it. What are you laughing at? <laughs> that vice is broken right now. And the barrel here is spotless inside. Make sure we're in the shop there. All right, so we're a little bit small right now, which is fine. Um, I actually don't care if it's a little bit loose on this end um, because I'm gonna, I'll probably take high heat cement and put around it uh, when I'm using it. But that's not fitting on at all right now, so I'm going to have to either take the Dremel or a file and clean it up a little bit.
see if we got it fit. No, we do not. Okay. So, looks like there. Well, the majority of this hole. I would rather fiddle with it and maybe even put up with a little frustration and have it gapingly huge because although I am going to use high heat cement to seal it up, I don't want to, I don't want to gap that big to seal up. Ooh. All right, one more time. There we go. And there's still, ah, well, it's a sizable gap, but it's kind of the gap that I expected here. Um, but again, we'll seal that. It is an incredibly humid day. Yesterday was beautiful, but humidity has come back today with a vengeance. So, anyway, here we go. Now, I need to go to the bottom side. I'm probably not going to make you sit through this same thing again. But I need to go to the bottom and uh, cut another hole in it so that this will go through. All right, well, I wanted to get it in the shot with me putting this in place, but it's a lot of fiddling around to get the hole the right size, and it suddenly just fell into place. So, here it is. It's in place. What I'm going to do now is just lay the barrel down and uh, run it into where I've got about two inches, inch and a half, two inches sticking out here, and then I'm going to take my welder and try to weld it. A um, little note about welding. My welder is not the greatest, and neither is the one using it. It's a, a little Harbor Freight thing, but... It does what I need it to do, and I, at least I hope it does. I might, the hole got a little large in some spots here. I didn't want that to happen here on this part. So I might have to fill in uh, with some pieces of steel back to that, but we'll see. Anyway, next I gotta get out the welder and all that wonderful stuff. Well, I laid down probably the ugliest weld bead you've ever seen in your life on this thing. Um, then I went and wrapped around it with uh, some high temperature cement, some uh, Rutledge, I think it is. I'll look up the name of it. Uh, so anyway, I, I put it, put a high, high temperature cement around it. If you're a better welder than me and have a better welder than I do, then you can skip that. Although this is strictly for entertainment, I'm not encouraging anybody to do this. Anything you do is your responsibility. But uh, yeah, if you're a better welder, you don't need this. Uh, next, I'm going to move over to... Um, the stand here, I'm going to weld some tabs around maybe three points so that I can keep the barrel centered on top of it. So that's what I'll be doing next. Alright, well, I'm taking a little bit of acetone to the outside of this because um, the contents of this barrel are now on the outside of it. What, it, what is in this barrel is actually a saw lubricant uh, for, for a sawmill where I work. The barrel was uh, trash. But it had it's a vegetable oil uh, based product, so it's safe. And I want to cook it out of there anyway, but it's on the outside here, and that's going to hinder me from what I'm doing. So, yeah, I'm not going to bother measuring what I'm doing with all of this. But I'm going to take these strips, just kind of weld them to the high spots here in three different places, just to act as a lip to help hold everything on.
a hole in my pants. Imagine that. I can't let this cycle, but for so long it'll uh, blow the breaker in the house, trip the breaker in the house. through it there okay next one all right um so like a quick walk around here I'll back up and let you see the whole thing I'm not real happy with my um, stacking system here these tabs I don't think are a bad idea um, see the gap in here and we're actually sitting on one of the tabs there and with the pipe and everything in here that's about an eighth inch walled pipe it's not too light so anyway here's a uh, full-size view of it and um, Matt go stand beside it for scale Matt is about six foot tall and so that's that's how tall that is and uh, I think I've about overheated, so I'm gonna go get something to drink and cool down a little bit, and then I think we might chop some wood and load it up. Might not get to do much on it today, but we'll get some coal making, some charcoal making, and uh, get that up shortly. All right, until then.